All right. So let's talk about college funding. So <clears throat> I don't, I don't know if anybody, maybe Mark knows, but I don't think you guys know me that well. Um, I have two kids. I have an almost 21 year old stepson and I say he's mine because if he screws up, I got to pay for it. So he's mine. Um, he's a senior at Grand Canyon University in Phoenix, Arizona. And then I have a 12 year old daughter. So Chris and I, I'm at Parker News 3. Chris already had a 529 in place. Uh, a 529, for those of you that don't know, is it's kind of like a 401k for education. It's a deferred uh, tax vehicle where you're deferring taxes um, till later. If you use it for education, you don't have to pay taxes on it. It's cyclical. It's based in a, in a market investment. And you, you put money in there and... <clears throat> Yeah, you literally just put money in there and yeah. and uh, hopefully it goes up at the market. Now, I no, went back and checked. Let me see who that is. Oh, what's he do now? Oh, good job. I uh, I went back and, and looked. So, Chris and I put a, a little over $70,000 of our money in Parker's 529 plan. And it grew to just on uh, just shy of 150. And uh, we we have one one semester to still pay for. Out of our, out of, he's going to borrow the money. I'm done. I'm tapped out. Um, <clears throat> so uh, it did a great job. I mean, the money more than doubled over that time period. Obviously, you know, you guys know the markets have been on fire. Well, right before, uh, or sorry, we saw coronavirus two years ago, slip down. Okay. And I said to, to Chris, I said, we're not doing this with no elegant. We're not. I, I preach this stuff. I'm going to I'm going to live by it because I already have my IUL for retirement. So I literally opened up uh, F and G and I'll, I'll show you how to structure it and what it looks like. Um, and I put in two hundred dollars at the time. Noel was nine. <clears throat> and uh, I put in I literally put in two hundred dollars. I'm like, I'm doing it. I just pulled the trigger right then and there. Because the the benefits of the IUL are incredible compared to a 529. Those benefits are if she she's five seven, she's she just turned 12 years old not too long ago. She's five seven. So if she gets a volleyball or a basketball scholarship, um, you know, which she won't, but <clears throat> if she does, uh, I can use the, the 529 plan for retirement. She could use it for maybe a little bit of infinite banking. OK, it doesn't have to be used for education. Um, what if she becomes an insurance agent like her old man? OK, my degree hangs on the it's a paperweight. It hangs on the wall like a paperweight. OK, what if she doesn't go to school? All of these things are benefit. What if it what if all of a sudden the market tanks? OK, we don't have to worry about that. We were lucky with Parker that the majority of the money we put in was during a market uptick. So, so many more benefits to an IUL, excellent, Thanks, over, uh, over a 529. So what I'll do is I'll show you, uh, I will show you exactly, if I can find my cursor here, what's going on? My cursor froze. Uh -oh. I don't know what's going on, guys. My, I can't put my cursor on my screen. I think I, I think I paused. I completely froze. You guys there? Your mouse might be dead. No, I, I, everybody's frozen on my machine. Everybody's completely frozen, so I think I gotta refresh the page. I, refresh I the top. I got it. I got. I got it. I, I could. My cursor wouldn't even move. There we go. Can you guys see my screen now? All right. Cool. I don't know. I just completely froze up. It was really weird. I couldn't even couldn't even find my cursor, so I couldn't refresh anything. <laughs> All right. So this is what I did for Noel. So OK, 
Do you write policies on your immediate family? Yeah, you can write policies on yourself. I wrote a policy on myself, written them on my my kid. So Noel at the time was nine. We were in California. So it's not, I haven't changed that default yet. And we do pass setter. Okay. So we standard juvenile underwriting classes. You can't pick anything else. <clears throat> we solve for max accumulation and income always. We know the premium, so we're going to solve for face. Nope, there's no commission cut if you write it on yourself. Okay. Do a monthly premium of 200 bucks a month. We're going to pay until she's 24 years old. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have her borrow the money or I'm going to borrow the money on her behalf. Have her build her credit. Okay, she'll probably borrow it. I'll, I'll co-sign for it because of FAFSA. Pay until she's 24 years old, 23, 24 years old. Okay, because after school, they give you a grace period after the kid graduates. We're going to start income at 24. We're just going to have that last 20 years. Then we're going to solve for a second income in retirement at, let's say, age 70. And that make it last until she's age 100. So I'm going to say 20 years of pay, using the loan provision to pay back her school loan. And then at 70, she can take it out for retirement. Okay? We're always going to use those 7702 rates. We're going to do option B to A, increasing. I'm going to change it back to level at age 24 when I stop paying. Okay. Come down here. We're going to do 100% in the trailblazers. We're ready to roll. <clears throat> now, remember, I came out of pocket. Just to, It was like 71 and change for Parker. And we still don't have enough for him to complete his schooling. Grew to just just shy, I think, 150 grand. Can you guys see the illustration? You guys can see F and G? Yep, awesome. Okay. So what I did here, okay, is this thing will grow. To around 154,000 bucks, I'll be able to pull at least $500 a month out of this thing. The $500 a month will pay back her student loans. So, and I only came out of pocket. Look at this, guys. I only came out of pocket 36 grand. That's a heck of a lot better than 70 grand. Okay. Borrow the money, use this to pay back the loans. That covers the loans for $131,000. And I haven't paid a dime. I won't pay a dime after she's, after she's 24 years old. Look what she can pull out at 70 for retirement. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Okay. So not only did I give her $130,000 worth of, worth of basically student loan equi equity or whatever you want to call it, pay that, pay that loan back, build her credit, and I've jump-started her retirement. Yeah, inflation in 62 years from now is going to be a little different, but I wish somebody would have done that for me. All tax-free, not tied to education. And if she, if she doesn't use it, for school, well, then this is going to be one heck of a huge number right here. Okay. Um, so I think if you show this to people and dovetail with that, dovetail in the protect your family, protect you from market risk, protect you from unnecessary taxes, and protect you from outliving, it's a phenomenal tool. Anytime I've sold one of these, it's I've I've either sold the parent an IUL or I I like rolled some money. 
And then they're like, hey, can I do this for myself? Absolutely, yes, you can. Okay, so any questions on that? How to position that? Uh, hey, and Jeff, it's Mohammed. Quick question. Hey, uh, yes, sir. So you 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 designed this in a way wherein you after you stop putting money in at age twenty four of your your daughter, mm -hmm. you no longer put in anything even after she can afford to put oh. a little bit more in the future. I could transfer ownership. I could transfer ownership. She could pay back her loans. Absolutely, she could. Like, so let's say she got a job. Let's say she got a job where she didn't have a match on her 401k. I could transfer ownership to her and uh -huh. say, hey, just pay yourself back here. And then this will be, this will be even higher. Yeah, this is, okay. So no, no more premiums after age 24, correct? Yeah, look, look. I mean, 30... Here we are at here we are at age 99, 36,000 bucks. We turned 36,000 dollars into call it 2.7, 2.8 million dollars. But if she lives to 99. If she lives to 79, we took 36,000 and we turned it into like what 1.2? Yeah, basically. That's the power Jeff, of IULs for young people. Yes. Jeff, are you were you the insured on the account? No, my daughter is the insured. She was the insured. Okay. I'm the owner. You own the, I'm, you own the policy though. Okay. Got yeah. it. Uh, well, here, here, here's something cool guys. Look at this. I'm the owner of this. I'm, on, I'm the owner of this. Okay. So let's say, I don't know. Let's say in 30 years, I need some money, right? Let's say I can, I can come in here and borrow from this thing. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that to her, but if God forbid, let's say she didn't go to school. Let's say she didn't go to school, and then all of a sudden these numbers keep climbing. Okay. And let's say here there's a hundred, let's say, let's see, 30 years from now, 30 years from now, let's say there's 160, this number is 163,000 too. Well, I know I can pull 10% of that out the rest of my life. That's a rule of thumb. I could supplement my retirement by 16 grand. She, let's say she got a scholarship and went to school, or she became an insurance agent. She just, crushed it, you know, did her own retirement, wanted to go crypto and didn't even care about this or whatever it was, right? I could use it for my own retirement because I'm the owner of the payer. She's the insured. Why did I make her the insured? Cost of insurance is much less. She has more time. There you go, Steve. Yep. Time and that, that remember that, that three-sided triangle, time, money, and age. Age determines cost of insurance. Good job. Hey Jeff, I have yes. an important question on this. Yeah. So I just I just submitted a, a an application for a young lady, thirty nine years old, completely healthy, except she has a bipolar disorder. Okay. She was declined. Okay. Because of that. Mm -hmm. But she has two two young kids. Mm -hmm. So we could reapply for them and basically do the same thing that we were going to do for her because she could use the same money for retirement and everything, just like you just said, true. right? Well, true. There, there's some, there's some, there's some caveats here. F and G, <clears throat> some carriers like to have the parents to have double the insurance face amount, double the face amount on themselves than the kids. Kind of have to, I mean, if you, you have a kid and all of a sudden you've got $3 million of life insurance on a child, that's kind of weird, right? So they, they will ask you about that. Um, I know if it's, you're probably going to write F&G. I can talk to Ben and say, hey, Joel Edelson's writing a, writing a policy. It's for college funding. Um, the mom was going to do it on herself, but now she's doing it on the kid. We have a little bit of play there, not a ton of play. But we have a little bit of play where we can uh, we can justify those amounts. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Jeff, go ahead, Jeff. If hold on, I, hold, Bobby. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You can, but hold on. I just want. Does that make sense? No, it does. And and if there's okay. a way, even I, if I can get some like uh, John Hancock or some kind of just basic term coverage for her, that would and help. Gonna, and I'm going to tell you, I am not the guy to ask about term. And I'm not the guy to ask about if people qualify or not, because I've in my career, I've dealt with young, healthy people. I haven't dealt with old, unhealthy people. Okay, Bobby, go ahead. Jeff, that's a great point. I actually ran into that on a specific case. 
where I shifted gears for health purposes. I was able to overcome that by writing a half a million dollar accidental policy. Uh, so when I did submit the child policy, uh, I did submit it with the information regarding the accidental policy and the amounts, and it went through smoothly with no issues whatsoever. Awesome. So just awesome. a little tip, and that will also add an additional policy to your numbers. Yep, cool. Thank Good you. work. Yeah, good job. And, and um, I had another similar. Oh, go ahead. No, go, go ahead, Mohammed. And uh, then we'll no, then we'll take Shelly and I, Steve. I had a couple of scenarios too. Some where the parents only have a group term life insurance from work, and mm -hmm. it went smoothly as well. So yeah, if you cool. can, if the, if the parent has a job that offer her. Uh, a life insurance, you can also use that as well, saying parents already has life insurance. Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah. Shelly, go ahead. Okay. Um, so this may sound funny, but can you have two IULs on the same child? Let's say the, the mom and dad were divorced and they, they put an IUL on them. Can the other parent do that as well? Can you yeah. put two policies on a person? Yeah, Nelson Nash had 45 policies on himself when he when he passed away and had over a million dollars of outstanding loans. Whoa. Well, his death benefits got reduced accordingly, but he did have he had 45 participating whole life policies on himself. He did. How many of those uh, were with the same carrier? I don't know. That I don't I don't remember. I read the book, but I don't remember that being in the book. But I know he had 45 uh, participating whole life policies on himself and had a million dollars of outstanding loans when he passed away. Steve, go ahead. You were so patient. Thank you. Hey, Jeff. Um, yes, sir. So flexibility for these, like, you know, you say, hey, I'm going to pay on my daughter till she's 24 and stop. Um, she could in turn come in and start paying if she wants to at age 30. Yeah. What? Or not pay, obviously. Um, so I guess there's there's tremendous flexibility in I think these plans and what what mm -hmm. are some things that they cannot do I guess from you know what would you not tell a fan, a, a parent to, for a child because you're talking um, I mean, right here I guess we're talking children you know? yeah 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 um, I don't know it's a really good thing for the kid I'm trying I know. trying to think of a, a negative <laughs> aspect I I don't really see a negative aspect because i've lived i live these numbers right i I, right. I've, I live them so i don't um i guess if you started it and then stop paying and let it lapse would be it would be an issue because eventually the cost of insurance would eat it up it would take a really long time whereas in a 529 if you started it and just let it sit there it could it could get reduced due to market risk um but it would probably bounce around like this whereas if you stop paying on a children's policy eventually it would take a long time but because you set it up correctly but i other than that i really i'm really struggling to think of something i agree and i, I think it's like you talk to a per person who has a 529 already started hey jeff why am i gonna switch why would i need a change can i have both of course you can have both yeah you know, i think it's kind of getting over that hump of people having that mindset of you know here's another one how many people have kids in school Anybody else have kids in school? So you know, you guys know, <clears throat> college age kids, you guys know that you need a proctologist to get those FAFSA people out, out, you know, out of your life. Okay, right? I mean, it's not fun. They want to know every sick. So <clears throat> it doesn't count against FAFSA because money inside of a life insurance policy doesn't count. Probably doesn't help most of us, but it's, it, you know, that's there too. What other questions you guys have? That's a good one. Uh, Jeff, the, que the question I have with reference to using um, IUL for college funding, because that's what I have for my kids uh, three years yeah, ago. Yeah, good. Awesome. And, um, and the, the question is, how do you market it to us uh, with the competition out there, the 529? What, what is normally your go-to when you're talking to a client, when you're trying to compare? So I'll, I'll do something like this. Role play with me a little bit here, Muhammad. Okay. Oh, somebody said to email that. Remind me. I'll email it over to Mark, and then he can get it out to you guys. I don't have everybody's email. So, uh, 
<clears throat> okay, so how much are you gonna put away? Let's say they're putting 200 bucks a month away. Okay. And they get, I don't know, 8%. Oh no, oh, initial investment zero. Zero, 200 bucks. Let's say they get, uh, let's say they're nine, uh, nine, so what, 13 years? Is that right? 13 years? Let's say 15. Yeah. Okay. Estimated interest rate, 8%. Okay. Calculate that up. They're going to come out of pocket 65 grand. Okay. Okay. In a 529 plan, what the hell are you going to do with 65 grand? That's two semesters. Right? Uh -huh. That's two, that literally, that's two semesters. Okay. So, how many years was that? Let's, let's do an apples to apples here. I, 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 I don't know if it's a time change. My brain went blank there for a second. Usually, I apologize. Usually, I don't look at my, don't look at my screen there. So, how long did we, how long, how long do we put that in for Noel? 24 years that example you yeah. just did yeah 15 years yeah so 65 grand i'm coming out of i'm coming out of pocket instead of 65 grand or instead of uh the same amount i'm coming out of pocket the exact same amount sorry stop share ah where is it there it is I'm coming out of pocket the exact same amount in 15 years. I turn my 36 grand in this illustration. I turn this just for college funding. I turned it into 131, 380. And that's 8%. Same amount of money out of pocket. I turned my 36 grand into 131, not 65. Actually, if this came to fruition, I did it this way. And my daughter lived to 89. I turned my my 36 into almost $2 million, $1.9 million. You want 65,000 or do you want 1.9 million? I mean, that's like a drop the mic and step yeah. on it, uh -huh. right? So yeah. that's 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 how I would market it. I would say, look, you know, you could come out of, we're going to come out of pocket $36,000. Do you want 65 in a really good market situation? Let's call it, let's call it 70, even a hundred grand. Whoa. I'm still going to knock the socks off of you. Okay. Yeah. At 131 by borrowing the money from the participating whole life, borrowing the money from a bank, using this to build the kid's credit, put them as a, put them as a, uh, what you call it on the, on the loan. And I only came out of pocket 30, 36 grand. And I paid for the whole dang thing. And I gave him a retirement. All right. It makes sense. And, and another thing I normally add to the, the parents sometimes, because usually you meet some parents, oh, I can only do 50 bucks. What I do, I go to American Funds, their website, they have a college calculator. You put mm -hmm. the, 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 the kid's age and you ask them what college they, they anticipate the kids are going to go to. And I input the college, it tells it projects what it's going to cost. Sometimes that make, whoa, I was trying to put $50, it may end up costing over $200,000. They, yeah, they increase yeah. whatever they were, they're gonna, they were planning on, on putting down. They would probably say, oh, I can do $100, 150 200 now, because it's going to cost a lot more. Oh, I, I can't even imagine what college is going to cost. Yeah. One of the things, too, guys, that I, I like about the IUL versus the, the 529, if you didn't mention, Jeff, and I'm sorry if you did, I stepped off oh, for five that's right. minutes. That's right. But the fact that a 529 you have to use for college or you are penalized, Yeah. Right. And in this day and age where I'm not diminishing college or the importance of university or college education or what have you, but there's a lot more moving toward entrepreneurship, skilled trade, things like this. And let's say you feed into a college, you just really prepared, you feed into a 529 since the day they were born and they turn 18 and they say, I don't want to go to college. Oh, great. What was all that for? Right. So in IUL, they can use it for whatever they wish. And it gives them the freedom and flexibility of knowing they can do whatever they want with their life. But this is intended for college kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I say the joke. 
I say, what if what if she becomes an insurance agent like her old man? And my and and the guy seriously, I I would I would I was a double major in political science and geography. It really helped me finding people's houses. Like I could really I could really get directions to their house. Right, film school did a ton for me here. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. See, it just we have these degrees that we don't use, and I wish I would have grown up saying I want to be an insurance agent. I'd have been ahead of the game. Thank you. I love it. Yeah. Or, or, if, or if they get a scholarship, I'm, I'm going to tell you how hard it is to get a scholarship. My kid actually has a partial scholarship for golf at Grand Canyon and he's the worst golfer on the team. <laughs> he is. He's on the team, but he's the worst one on the team. So it's really, it's really hard. He's got 25% scholarship and it's really difficult. And the kids that have the full rides are real, real good. That's excellent. Any you guys have anything else? I mean, I'm, I'm here, guys. You got me for a half hour. I don't care if it has to do with kids' policies, IULs in general, anything you want me to go back over. I would love the opportunity to take a really good look at that illustration that you put together. That was very impressive. I've been fooling around with that tool a lot. I've put together several. Um, and I, I haven't put one together that quite looked that good with just $200 where it was multi-purpose like that. That was pretty strong. I would love the actual illustration. Um, that I'll, email, I'll email it to Mark. And uh, he can distribute it out to you guys. I'll get it and out I, to the group. Thank oh, you. That Jeff. was strong. Yeah, yeah, that was a great yeah. illustration. Thank you. Yeah, yeah this is fantastic. And guys, Jeff's uh, very generous. We finished a little early, but I'd love for you guys. I mean, this is it. This is, I mean, in, I, I, Jeff's been highly accessible and we're grateful for that. And of course, you always have access to Jeff's tranquility. But this is our last session with Jeff. Um, so. Love unless you, you want to take advantage of that unless you want to start annuities and there's a lot of annuity around well, the company i'll there's tell you jeff this was this was really I great i want to thank you mark thank you uh, for putting hey, it jeff. together cool. thank you uh, jeff yeah. quick question any marketing yes, materials for college funding with cemetery like flyers okay. and things like that sort you know and no um i'm not the biggest flyer guy and it, it's probably a, a flat spot in my rock but I'm not a, the big flyer guy because I, they're not buying fidelity and guarantee. They're not buying, you know, anything but you. I want to be in control of it. Everybody on this call, everybody on this call is talented. Everybody on this call has success in, in sales. You, they're buying you. They're not buying the colors on the flyer, the fancy thing. They're buying you. And I think the more, you understand sales and the more you put yourself front and center and you are genuine to yourself. I don't want you to be Jeff Sigworth. I don't want you to be Mark Neubauer. Right? I want you to, I want you guys to be you. Muhammad, you're a cool, likable guy. Like I enjoy you. I, I see you in my trainings. Like you want to get and talk to people. You don't just don't want to hand them a flyer. You're a very charismatic, uh, extroverted guy. Go sell that sucker. Show somebody the value. They're yeah, going to buy you. a door knocking. So, uh, and that's Kobe good. Me a little bit, yeah, but um, they're I do a lot of yeah. They're gonna buy you. They're gonna buy you before they buy anybody else or anything else. So, I, I, I would, I would take confidence in that and rest on that. I promise you, you'll have success. Hi. Thanks. Yeah, of course. And so, Mark, yeah, I, I've been doing an, uh, some annuity training for some of the groups because while well, the markets are going down, there's a lot of instability. Uh, going on, I, you know, we can take, you know, another three, four weeks. I got this time blocked off. If you want to start with the nudies and kind of roll from there next week. I would love that. I'm going to speak to, to William, whose call I hijacked for these five weeks, but I don't think he'll mind adjusting our call accordingly, our other call, because we're here we are and the time is perfect. Um, I would love that. And I say, yes, if you're, if you're up for it, Jeff, I'm, I'm up for it. I've got, I'm I've got it blocked it. off on my calendar. Awesome. Let's get Steven. into annuities, guys. I love it. Let's Steven, do it. were you raising your hand? No, I'm sorry. I was just saying yes, please, oh. on the annuities. <laughs> yeah, cool. I'm going to tell you guys something. I think, and Mike and I have talked about this, I think getting into DFL is, DFL is a really easy sale. Uh, there's some moving parts to it. There's some, there's some follow-up work, but it's a very easy sale, especially with that DFL report. But if you can understand IULs and annuities, I'm telling you the concepts between Cheryl will tell you Cheryl's DFL certified, right? DFL, IUL, and annuities. Once you understand one, 
they kind of dovetail together really, really easily. Um, and, and, and a lot of people get afraid of annuities like, well, I need to start with a small one that but like 30 grand. Well, the only difference between a $30,000 annuity and a $300,000 annuity is one zero. The mass is the same, the product's the same, the illustration is the same, everything's the same about it. The only, the only difference is one extra zero at the end. That's it. Okay. So don't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid of annuities. They put their pants on one leg at a time, too. Bigger bucks, too. Yeah. And, 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 and Steve, I'm going to tell you, they are, they are very lucrative, but don't get caught elephant hunting. OK, I, I kind of elephant hunted in my career. I was lucky that I had an IUL market to go get. Right. But if you got to try to go start elephant hunting and you don't shoot the rabbits and the squirrels and the, and the turkeys, you could starve. Yep. Well, I'm going to I'm going to check the chat. I was ignoring the chat. Um, yeah, my email address is Jeff dot Sigworth at Quility dot com. Hey, Mark. Yes, Cheryl. Um, okay, so at the beginning of this, you said that you were going to put some put this whole series together and um, and email it to us. Are you still going to do that? Yeah, this is week five of IUL, and so okay. we'll do an we'll do an IUL um, Kate, like uh, series that I'm going to I'm just going to trim the fat. You know, some of us show up early and chit chat stuff like that. So I'm going to trim the fat, put some bumpers on it, um, uh, give Jeff and Quillity proper edification, and then I'll have the series uh, as a private link on our YouTube channel, so that and you guys will all have access to that. Um, and Jeff and I will discuss if that's something he feels comfortable making public, then we'll just leave it up there. Awesome. I'm, you I'm guys fine. are the bomb, I'm telling you. Absolutely fabulous. Uh, this, I'm so glad you guys are getting the value that, that we hope yeah. to have this. Yeah. I, I, I was wowed by Jeff again three years ago. I never forgot his name or what he did or, or the impact he had on, on us in that room. Me and Steve and Bob Morris and Chris Judy were all there that day. And I, I never forgot it. It's good stuff. Well, well whatever Mark yeah. says is, is true. Well, <laughs> yeah, everything. No, but it really, what I love is what, what you're doing is still part of what we have. I, I say this a million times, but it never gets old to me is Brian Pope stood on stage at the 2019 Leadership Summit and said, symmetry is evolving and mortgage protection is systematic. It's, it's incredible income for those just coming in and, and want to work and build the business accordingly. But there's so much more that we can do here and, and we're building the business so that if somebody just wants to come in here and focus on advanced markets, retirement solutions, debt-free life, we have a path for them. And that's the path that we're trying to create in this division, because I believe this resonates with some of us in, in such a big, big way. And for those of us doing mortgage protection, nonetheless, it's a great pivot. I mean, the mortgage protection is, is a great start, but as you start asking good questions, you find this might be a better, better overall solution for them. So, Mark, do you want to see behind the curtain a little bit? I love seeing behind the curtain. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll share some stuff with you guys. All right. <clears throat> so this is what my next assignments are going to be. Okay. So I'll, I'll do this one for you guys. Um, so if you guys can see this, we're going to take the reset process where we do the financial fire driller FIF. We're going to implement it company wide. This is what I'm working on, right? We're going to talk about <clears throat> the intro, uh, the history of FIS, what we did at Assura, the goals, the increased profitability, the persistency and value add when you have multiple uh, contracts in a home, how we're going to tie that to the summit that we learned about at the last virtual conf conference. Some quick start, guys, what the agent's responsibility is going to be what subject matter expert criteria and what their responsibility is going to be. So if you don't know annuities or you don't know DFL or you don't know IULs, you can set somebody within your organ, reset somebody within your organization. Okay. What the agency owners, what uh, upper management and the hierarchies, what my responsibilities are. Okay. And then we have training. What is an FIF? How do you take it? How do you read it? How do you break it down? Why we use the Socratic sales process. We're going to talk about pace, tonality what the asset definitions are, if you don't know, what looping is. We're gonna ask some second layer questions, objection handling, 
Uh, and then the survey question. So if I am asking, uh, let's say I'm asking you, Cheryl. Cheryl, since I know you're DFL certified. Cheryl, it looks like you're making an overpayment to your, to your car loan, uh, your credit cards, and also your mortgage, correct? Yeah. Would you say that getting out of debt is a priority for you? It is. It really is. So if I could show you a way where you could get out of debt and build wealth without spending any additional money, would your retirement be more comfortable? That would be absolutely amazing, Jeff, if you could now, do that for me. Now I didn't sell her anything. I gave her what she wanted. OK, so it's it's those second and third layer questions, asking the questions, but you're just not an order taker. Okay? And then we'll have our certification classes, which you guys are already got one down. So when you take when you see it and then um, and then I'm doing some of this stuff. So this whole process. Is eventually. Going to be automated. So check out this. So this right here, I think it'll come up. This right here, I'm putting together the logic on if you have a 403B, what's the, what's the balance? The next question is if yes, if no. All this logic, if you have an IRA, if you have a DSP, if you have a pension, it talks about pension mask and uh, pension max and how to go to the survey. What, what is your survivorship options? All this logic on all the FIF for DFL. Here's the DFL, what to reallocate. It's literally gonna be completely automated. So when you sit down in front of your computer, it's gonna be like a choose your own adventure for you and the client. Oh my God, that is and, awesome. And that's what's, that's what's coming soon with that. And that's gonna be my responsibility to, to kind of head that up. And that's incredible. And you guys are, you guys are already getting, you guys, I'm grooming you and teaching it in a way. So you guys are going to have a, a, a head start on that. Easy. Yeah, you guys are going to have a head start on that. Not only on the certification, because, you know, it's pretty much going to be what we go over. We're going to also that, that FIF. That's why I put a lot of that FIF training. So you guys are going to get used to second and third layer questions. You guys are going to get used to resetting for a subject matter expert in your organization or reset yourself. Like Jeff said, I'm not resetting anybody else. I'm setting to reset myself, right? I'm getting that. So the fact that you guys are here and wanting to, wanting to learn, I, I love it. So you can reset yourselves for all these advanced market opportunities. So that's a little bit what I'm doing behind the, behind the curtain and what's, what's eventually coming here in the next quarter to two quarters. Woo. Any questions, comments? Um. Hey, Jeff, with reference to an IUL presentation, like a PowerPoint, do you have anything like that? For, for what now? A IUL presentation, like a PowerPoint presentation. I, I do. If you guys shoot me an email, I can shoot that over to you. Um, do you want to, I, I, I can go through it real quick here for you. Uh, if you shoot me an email, right. I, I'll share it. I usually customize it. This one, um, This one, where's the presentation? This one's just a generic one that I created and I'll go through it with you guys real quick. That's the better view, I think. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll go in here and I'll customize it. So this is, this is based on Assura stuff, right? <clears throat> Here's the companies we use. I usually go in and AIG, everybody's heard of AIG. Do you guys know why AIG paid back the money uh, faster than the federal government after the 2008 financial crisis? It was because of the insurance arm of the company. F&G, best IUL carrier, Forrester's great company. North American, phenomenal company. Allianz, number two mover of money in the world. F&G owned by BlackRock, number one mover of money in the world. And for those of you who, some of you should know that the Eagles play at Lincoln Financial Field, so I gotta I gotta throw that in there. Home office of Lincoln Financial is in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Is it really? It sure well, is. They support my bird, so I gotta go with it. Fantastic. It. We take advantage of Section Seven Seven Zero Two. We overfund a life insurance contract to pull that money out tax free. We're gonna kill two birds with one stone by providing a death benefit and tax free income. I want you to think of this as a Roth IRA married to a life insurance area. Uh, life insurance policy, and it protects you in the four key areas, right? And we're going to go over those. 
minimum death benefit, maximum cash value. So I'll put in here what their what their death benefit is, why it's a strange uneven number. Okay, I'll put it right in here. It's the same money. I'm not here reaching in your pocket and creating another bill. You told me we we're putting 500 bucks a month away. I went down to four because it's going to go back in your check. That death benefit's 100% income tax free. It's 100% portable and it's 100% tort proof or creditor proof. You can't litigate against uh, a life insurance policy. Protected from market risk, never lose money. We look at the 65 year look back, the average annual return. We explain what cap and floor is, what annual lock and reset is. And then we look at some historical charts, okay? Go back to, I haven't updated this in a couple of years, but if you go back to 1999, if you were on this chart, what line do you want, right? The purple line, which is the market, you keep digging out of these holes. You gotta dig out of these holes. The dot-com bubble, the housing bubble, right? This is the, this New York life, is the uh, participating whole life. And then you have a CD, okay? I saw this on, a couple of years ago, I saw this on somebody's desk and I went, oh yeah, this is pretty awesome. Well, we know where the next one's, we know where the next, uh, the slope of that line's gonna be, right? We know exactly what that slope's gonna be. When is it gonna happen? We don't know, okay? I usually cut this out and snip, snip in theirs go over that. Let me talk about taxes. You think taxes are going to go up or go down? Why wouldn't you want to pay your taxes now and get it tax-free in retirement? It's a trade-off between tax, death benefit and tax-free income. You give yourself a loan from that death benefit using the cash value as collateral. You pull the money out tax-free. Here's a visual visualization. It's hard to say. Visualization of uh, our debt in hundred dollar bills, that's a trillion dollars. That's fifteen trillion dollars. That's a hundred and fifteen trillion dollars. Now, who knows what our unfunded liabilities are now? Does anybody know? One hundred and fifty, isn't it? It's right around one hundred and fifty. So think about putting two of these, two of these, Empire State or uh, uh. Lady Liberty, Statue of Liberty, two of those piles up on this on this pile of money, and that's how much our debt is in hundred dollar bills. Okay, everybody's like, "Oh, well, well, my my, my political party is going to get in." It doesn't matter. Okay, so why did we have a spike here in our federal debt? What happened during these years? World War Two. Well, yeah, it's yeah. Come, coming out of the depression in World War II. Look what happens to tax rates. The screen, the screen lines tax rates. Right around here, Ronald Reagan was president. Do you know that Ronald Reagan only did two movies a year? He made a hundred grand a movie. He refused to do it more than two movie movies a year because he would only take 10 cents on the dollar because he would have been taxed at 90%. Move forward. We're at the third lowest, we're at the third lowest taxes have ever been. Back in here came the 401k. The tax rates were so high, people, in order to get money in the market, they had to say, hey, take the break now. We'll be in a lower tax rate in the future. But look what's happening to our debt. Now our debt's probably like, might even be off the page, right? Might even be up here by now, okay? This line's way up here. So it doesn't matter what political party is in office. We're spending ourselves oblivion. I heard somebody say something. It's a four-letter word right now. Our, 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 the, the problem is debt. It's, right? it's just debt. It's math. Okay? There's three types of money. Taxable now. What's a taxable now account? Give me, a, give me an example of taxable now. Life insurance. No. Uh, kind of, kind of. You pay your taxes pre- Entry. No, this would be like a savings account. Savings you're account. Gonna a, you're going to get a 1099 money market savings account. CD. C CDs. Yeah. Give me an example of tax deferred account. 401k. Yeah, easy. 401k. Tax free. Life insurance. Yeah, life insurance. Okay. Uh, our products have safeguards built into them. I throw this up there. All right. 
now I compare, now I have this placeholder in there. Now I say, hey, remember that number you wrote down? That 13,000 or that 16,000? Yeah, now you got to pay taxes on it. What tax bracket are you in? Let's just say you're in a 15% tax bracket that it goes down to 13,000. Do you want $13,000 a year with no death benefit or you know, your death benefit runs out and death, the death benefit might be really expensive or you can't qualify? Or do you want $26,000 a year with a permanent death benefit? Which one, which one fits your life better, right? So I compare all those. I show that it does all the four things and then I'm done. So that's the, that's the PowerPoint I have for the IUL. And you could, and I make it, I don't protect it. So you can make it super customizable. That is nice, man. Appreciate it. I'll say, I'll shoot you an email. Yeah, shoot me an email, Jeff, jeff.sigworth at quility.com. And I'll, I'll be sure to send it over to you guys. All right. Thank you. Yeah, of course, guys. It looks like next week we'll we'll start with the annuities. Um, just and same thing. We'll start with what an annuity is and how do we find annuities, right? Say so kind of keeping that uniform, uniform uh, approach to the to the different solution sets. That's awesome. And guys, uh, leaders on on the calls, please note. I know some some of you have even hired in the interim. We, you know, when and if you feel your team are ready, we will have this full IUL collection bookmark. So. You can put your, your agents through the training series, but just the same, I encourage you. We're starting from ground zero with annuities next week. So encourage your teams to be on and little, learn a little extra something. Um, so long as they're, they're performing as, as you know, you feel they, they should and could be systematically on, on the other side of things. This is a great next step. It's a great evolution. And again, all the way back to, the the SoundCloud discovering annuities right um, with just a few questions that thing's probably five years old at this point it's still relevant if you no, ask the words right you ask the right you don't have to know a thing except a, a couple questions you ask the right questions in every appointment and about one out of every ten of those are going to be an annuity and you're going to add about fifty thousand um, dollars to your bottom line in in a year's time so really really important to remember. It's, it's all about the process more than having to know everything. We got your back, right? It's all about the good questions and, and the process in the home. And, and you'll be astounded by what you'll be able to accomplish if you're paying attention. We could even go through those some of those reset questions, whether you're resetting for yourself, whether you're going to reset for a subject matter expert in your, in your hierarchy. Um, yeah, and, and, and second, those second and third layer questions are so powerful and so, who can't ask two or three I mean, you pass an insurance exam you can ask two or three questions you're in sales right i mean it's not rocket. if i can do it if i can do it it's not rocket science well and frankly i i think that's as simple that's the simplest part of it but i believe it's the most difficult for most agents to bridge the gap right like you guys have learned all this stuff the question is how are you going to going to apply it my suggestion is always find those guinea pigs, right? Those same people that would help you move for beer and pizza are the same people that will sit down for 20 minutes and let you practice. I, I highly encourage you to do that. But out, outside of that, next level is simply learning these questions, the right questions to ask in the right situations. And again, you'll, you'll be amazed at just how quickly you get through it because not knowing a thing about this, if you just know how to ask the questions and they say yes, or the equivalent of a yes, great. You have time to go backstage, call F and G, call me, loop in a call with Jeff, you know, and, and figure out how to make that happen for them. Um, Philip Lawton, who's not here today, but he's on our team, great example. He was doing a mortgage protection. The guy said, oh, I really want something that builds cash or, or at least helps me put off taxes. Philip thought an IUL was appropriate. Turned out it wasn't because the guy wants to actually defer his tax situation. So we pivoted to annuities. And frankly, I don't know much about annuities, guys, hardly anything, maybe that much more than Philip did, but we covered it. We said, okay, what do you want to accomplish? He told us, we said, we'll get back to you next week. We called F and G. They walked us through everything, gave us a couple different illustrations, explained every line. They're your teachers. They get paid by the hour to teach, right? It's up to us to give them the, a call and, and request the education. So Jeff, anyway, I thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, thank you guys. 
Closing yes, out you IULs, anybody, any last right. questions other than just thank you. Thank you to Jeff Sigworth and his generous uh, donation of time here for us. They pay me to sit here, Mark. <laughs> I love it. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's like he's just like the guys at FG. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love working with you, you guys. You guys are great. You guys are great. Thank you. Need anything? Reach out to me. I'm available. Got my email. Uh, you guys should take out my phone number. Might as well have it. It's on my email anyway. It's 916-517-6514. All right, guys. Take care. I'll see you soon. Next week, annuities. Love Ready? it. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Guys. Thank you, guys. You Thanks, Bye -bye. Jeff. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. And we'll see you guys next week. Looking forward to it. Take care, right. everybody. Bye-bye now. Bye.